Hey guys, Thomas Aarons here with Aarons Bassin. Today we are talking about the Texas rig and my variation of it and how I like to fish it. So in today's video, we're going to break this down into first the equipment that you need to use, the baits that I like to use, and then the technique or the presentation, the presentation style that I prefer. So let's get into it. Everyone knows the Texas rig that fishes a lot. Um, it's one of those first ones that you learn when you're younger. Um, and so before I get into the why I fish it, when I fish it, let's break down the gear. What I prefer to use with my Texas rig is a spinning rod outfit. Let me get that right for you right here. I prefer a medium heavy rod. This right here is a Cashin medium heavy or a heavy with an extra fast tip. You can get that in the saltwater section of most stores. With that, I pair it with 16 pound braid. This is Sunline braid. And then I will go with 10 pound to 16 pound fluorocarbon leader. Now, you might be asking yourself, like, why do you use spinning tackle, generally speaking, with this? Because I also fish a lot from land, from a kayak, and also from a boat. Um, and I like the flexibility that spinning tackle gives me. In many situations, I can use this heavier spinning tackle and be just as effective as with an individual with a bait caster. I have the distance capability. I can cast it much farther. I can get it into some places that you usually can't. I also have the ability to use lighter heads, lighter uh, sinkers, which we're going to get into here. But with this setup, I still have the backbone to get them out of there. So with that said, what, what do I like to do with the terminal tackle? Terminal tackle wise, you want to get yourself an EDW style hook or a EWG style hook. And as you can tell here, it has that very wide gap right there. I'm going to use a Palomar knot. And then I'm going to go with a bullet weight, usually tungsten preferred if you can get away with it get tungsten weight wise you can go anywhere with one eighth up to one fourth is generally what i would tell anybody that's fishing this especially if you're fishing shallower water really grass or cover filled water let's say a small pond uh, a shallow river of course if you're fishing more like the tva system that's a little separate video there that's a very specific um area where you need heavier tackle you could probably get away with a bait caster you're going up to a ounce half ounce style weight um, but generally speaking if you go with a one fourth to one eighth ounce sinker on a one aught to three aught ewg style hook that's all you need to really have success with this and again i'm going to link all this in the description of the video as well so that said you will also want to get yourself a weight stopper, a bobber stopper. There are tons of great companies out there that make them. Um, you can use whichever feels comfortable, but I'll link some of the ones that I use in the description as well. So now we have the terminal tackle. We have our hook. We have our weight, our bobber stopper. We have our leader material. This right here is 12 pound fluorocarbon sunline to again, 16 pound braid. Now worms or the baits I like to use and I gave it away, it's worms. So I prefer in fishing, I will use, I'm a tackle junkie and I'll use any and all techniques. I'm not specifically just master of one, I'm more of a jack of all trades. And even though I will use specific type of presentations, I enjoy presentations that have multiple purposes, like a, like a multi-tool, a Swiss Army knife, if you will, versus maybe a two ounce football jig that's specifically made for let's say fishing 30 plus feet of water that is fantastic for that specific niche that is designed for which is deep rocky water but what i prefer is to have as many techniques on my boat that have multiple things i can do multiple things with them so i don't have to constantly change baits and this is how i approach the texas rig i prefer to use swimming paddle style worms and i'll and i'll get into that real quick this allows me to do two things i can fish it on the bottom 
like most people that use a Texas rig do as well, but it also allows me to swim it. So going with a, a worm style creature, um, which I prefer, the Zoom cutter, the Zoom uh, speed worm right here, green pumpkin, it's fantastic, or just pumpkin seed. The rage tail crawl right here, which is another really good one. And the tried and true, just Berkeley power bait, power worm. Um, I'll list all this, of course, in the item descri description as well. But the key with this, and there are times when yes, just dragging it on the bottom works, using a brush hog will work. But for me, for this, this specific thing, you're gonna thread it on there, and you're gonna have the tail pointing up. That's the key, have the tail pointing up. Thread it on just like this. And then you're good to go. Boom, and I bring that down. And so with, with this bait hooked up, I have the ability to go down a bank. And if I just wanna swim it back like I would a spinner bait or a chatter bait or something like that, I can. And then when I get to a piece of cover, I can then milk it. And that is what I mean by a Swiss army type of bait. Instead of having three or four rods on the deck, let's say you don't own all those rods. Let's say you only have one combo. A bait like this that I call like a Swiss army kind of knife, you can do multiple things with it. Maybe with if you had a chatter bait, great bait, it is. It's kind of one dimensional. You can hop it a little bit, but you can't milk an area. It's a very good horizontal presentation and horizontal is going through the water column. Whereas something like this, I can fish it on the bottom. I can go up to a beaver dam, I could cast this in there and I can milk the area. And then when I'm done, I can just keep going down the bank and then I can swim it all the way. So I have the ability to do two things at one time. And I'll, that really gives you the benefit of always keeping a bait wet. One thing that I see a lot of anglers struggle with is they're always in the bottom of their boat. I see this a lot. You're down there, you're like, okay, well, I just, I just fished this you know, for about two minutes and I'm gonna try something else, I'm gonna try something else because you don't have maybe all the rods laid out. You only have one or two combos. Something like this keeps the bait wet always. And that's important. The longer you have a bait wet in the water, the higher possibility you have of getting a bite. So technique wise, when I'm fishing this thing, I'm gonna cast that out there for the swimming technique. And what I wanna do is I wanna take and I wanna slowly reel this back to where I have contact with whatever cover or structure I'm using. Classic example is fishing submerged vegetation. You wanna reel that thing just fast enough so that that thing is ticking the cover just ever so slightly. Uh, and just a steady reel is all you need with that once you have the depth figured out and the cadence. So that's, that's easy one-on-one retrieve number one. Number two, and this retrieve goes with many baits. It's a bob and bouncing technique. And this is gonna be good with a jig with a Ned rig, with a shaky head, a Nike, a Nico rig. Um, it is what I call sneaking it past them. You're going to cast the bait out. Once it makes contact with the bottom, what I want you to do is I want you to count every rock, every stump. I want you to take that and draw, just bring it back as slow as possible. You're gonna take it and once you cast it out, you're gonna take and you're just gonna use the rod tip and you're gonna keep semi slack in the line. You're not gonna be completely tight, semi slack. And you're gonna just shake the line once or twice. You should be able to feel the line bouncing with your rod tip. And then once you do that, you're gonna take and you're just gonna slowly drag it a little bit further as slow as possible. Then you're gonna repeat it and just shake it as slowly as possible. That's all you have to do to be successful with a worm, basically. So th that, those are techniques one and two. Pop that out there. But I'm gonna give you a third one here, okay? And that is the speed variation of this. The other reason I like this presentation right here with this lightweight is I can also fish insanely shallow matted vegetation. So for you pond guys out there, you have a lot of lily pads on your field and you have to pick. You only have one rod and reel combo. Should I go with a frog? Should I go with a fluke? Both fantastic presentations. I can take this on this setup here and I can burn it on the surface to get a reaction strike just like you would with a frog or a fluke. 
but then I can also slow it down. So for the burning thing, cast it out on a light weight. I suggest a 1 8 ounce sinker. So that way you can burn it on the surface and then kill it. So guys, I really hope that helped. That's my variation of the Texas rig. Using it more like that Swiss Army knife that you can do a lot of things with it with just one combo. Again, please like and, uh, please like and subscribe to the channel. Everything will be listed in the item description. I'm Thomas. I'll see you next time. Thanks.